Hello everyone. So it's the day after Christmas. By the way, Merry Christmas for those of you that celebrate. Happy holidays or yay, I hope you had a good weekend. <laughs> so I have leftovers from my Christmas dinner. I made ribeye steaks. And so I am going to reuse what I have in my fridge pantry to recreate a stuffed bell pepper cast iron skillet bake. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but it's going to be good. And the best part, it's the day after Christmas and I'm using leftovers. Here we go. So first things first, I'm going to chop up my steak. And there's actually like a lot of like steak juices and fat. And it's actually a lot of steak. Um, I might not use all of it. And if I didn't have leftover ribeye steak, I'd be using like ground beef for this. So let's see. Yeah, I think I'll chop up, chop up these pieces and the other ones. So these were cooked to all different like doneness. So whatever they are, they're going into this leftover. So you can see like how this one was cooked. And I'm just gonna chop it up. So I have it chopped and I want you to see, this is like right under a pound and a half of chopped steak. Okay, here I have four bell peppers. Uh, this is just what I have. And I'm going to cut these in half and remove the stem and the seeds on the inside. This one's kind of like large and long. I might cut it into quarters. But that's what I'm working with today. I've already chopped or sliced my onion. I had one large onion. You can chop, dice, slice, uh, you know, however you want to do that. Oh, that's skin. There we go. By the way, I also have some leftover buttered fresh corn that I sauteed. That's going into the skillet as well. <laughs> okay, so I have my cast iron skillet preheating. And I'm going to add some cooking oil. I'm going to start sauteing the onion. Give that a pinch of salt. And I'm going to let this start the process of what I'm cooking today. Now for the steak. I'm also going to add my corn. This is going to go pretty quick because things are kind of cooked already. I'm just sort of reheating them. And the steak is not heavily salted. When I cook steak for guests, I like them to salt, like to finish with salt to their preference. So I can add a little more seasoning and salt to this. But if you're working with heavily salted meat, well, you might want to skip some of the ingredients I'm adding. Okay, so pinch of salt. I'm going in with garlic powder, or you could use fresh garlic. I'm going with some garlic powder, onion powder, And I love smoked paprika. Um, this is probably like uh, somewhere between a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of smoked paprika. I'm going to give that a mix. And you can hear the sizzle of the pan has come down because the cold meat and the cold corn that came out of my fridge lowered the temp, so I'm going to raise or turn up the heat here. So I want to give you a closer look. And this is what I'm working with. So here, <clears throat> I'm going to add, whoops, like uh, one or two tablespoons, it's really up to you, of tomato paste. And I'm going to let that get, uh, kind of combine it with the meat and it'll create a crust at the bottom of the cast iron skillet. Now, typically you don't want to add tomato products to a well-seasoned cast iron skillet, but this little quick saute, it'll be okay. I've done this before, but you know, if you are persnickety with your cast iron skillet wear and tear, then don't add tomato-based products into your cast iron skillet. It's a good um, 
rule to abide by, but I've done it before and it's okay. Okay, here I'm going to add my beef broth. I've added a cup of beef broth into the, the mix here, and I'm going to let that reduce and just kind of, it'll just ensure that the corn is cooked and reheated and the steak. It's not going to take very long. I'm going to add some cracked black pepper. Taste it for seasoning and salt and adjust to your preference. After a couple of minutes of this kind of simmering, I'm going to remove it from the pan and layer it with the rest of my ingredients. Okay, so I'm going to put all of my meat that's in the cast iron skillet into this bowl, just briefly, because I'm going to put the bottom layer um, at, with the bell peppers. Okay, so here are the bell peppers, and I'm just going to arrange them into my cast iron skillet the best that I can. It's not going, it's not going to be perfect. I guess I can do it like that. Not. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that'll work. So you could individually stuff these neatly. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to pour this over my bell peppers. And you want to arrange it where most of it gets into the bell pepper, but this is really the, the best part about this, is it's kind of like you just dump it right on top. And it creates this meaty, oniony leftover layer. <laughs> is that the right way to describe it? And I'm just gonna kind of pack these in as evenly as possible. Okay, so I'm fired. <laughs> I left my cheese way over here. So here we go. So I've already layered it, bell peppers, the meat mixture or the meat saute. And now I'm gonna top it with cheese. I have shredded pepper jack cheese, cheddar cheese, Colby Jack cheese, mozzarella. It's really up to you and what you have, you know. You know that's like my favorite rule in the kitchen sometimes. That and clean hands. Okay, so there we go. Try not to make a mess here. So this is going to go in a preheated oven. You want to make sure you have your oven preheated at 425 degrees, or you could do 400 degrees. My oven kind of is not calibrated right. So to be on the safe side, 400 degrees until everything is melty, gooey, and you know you get a little bit of brown bits on the top. I'd say 25 to 30 minutes should do the trick. So it's going into the oven. Okay, so it should be ready. Oh yes. Oh, that looks amazing. We're gonna take this out carefully. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Not bad for leftovers. So let me shut off the oven, because we are done. Okay, so I mean, now it's time to dig in. I'm gonna get a plate and show you what it looks like. Before I serve it, I'm gonna add some freshly chopped parsley right on top. Oh, this smells amazing. I love it when leftovers come together to make a delicious meal the next day. Oh, so good. And then you could take some of this, the pan juices, and just pour it right on top. And here's your baked, cheesy, steak and onion stuffed bell pepper. Oh, the bell pepper cooked so well. It still has a bite to it, but it's still tender. Uh, so good. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.